Okay, so welcome back. So now we are going to actually style our messages because the messages are looking a bit boring at the minute, to be honest. So instead of using a div, I mean, we could type a complete element out in this if we wanted to, but that is not good practice. We want to make another component within channel. Okay, so we're going to make a message. We can make a new file within channel. And we can use slash to make a new folder automatically because we're going to have a few components and files within this message eventually. So we're going to call this message.tsx. And it automatically creates a folder, which is good. Now we can type sfc, you know the drill, message. Now unlike the parent components, this component will need props, so we'll get onto that. So what property does it need? Well, it's just a HTML attribute in React, what a property is, as a reminder. So we're just going to have message, and we don't have any types yet for messages and things, so we're just going to define message is any. And we'll get on to why we're using TypeScript later, and it's mainly to help know what types things are, and type safety. So we can add type safety later, and that is the main benefit of using TypeScript for this project. Okay, that's all we need, basically. A message and a key. So we can have message. Now we just specify message, oops, specify message, import it, import, um, use message here, and specify message here. Now it seems that key is an intrinsic JSX element attribute, so we don't have to specify it here, and it's, it's used on array items or list items. Okay. So, now we have the message, we can do the same thing, div, and inside this, now when we're using a, a stateless function component, we actually use this thing called props, we, we just specify props in the parameters, and then we use curly braces Props dot message. Okay, so here we go, we get high and high again. Brilliant. Now the one main thing that we're using React for this course is something called data binding. Now when we change a variable, you'll see it will update in here. And that's what data binding does essentially. So let's use an example. Let's change our let's change our message after two seconds. Okay. So we're gonna type messages. I mean we can do whatever we want with this. We can type messages the last message here and type content. So we're simulating editing it. Edited message. What's gonna happen? So you'll notice that nothing is actually happening here. Now, why is that? That is because we're not using state here, and this is not essentially being recalled right here. It's not being re-rendered because we're using, because we're not actually changing the state. When we change the state, this component is re-rendered. So when we re-render something in React, this function is called again, that's essentially what it does, and it just returns a new version of this with the updated variables. Okay, so react basically means it reacts to changes. That's all <laughs> that react means, really. So we're going to use a, something called a react hook, which is quite an advanced feature in react, but we're starting with react hooks, and we're not going into classes because I prefer functions as they're much simpler, take up less code, and have 
it's just a preference really. So we can use something called state. Now this is how we do it. So we have our messages here. Just we'll just keep them there. Let's let's copy this. So I'm gonna cut it. Now we're gonna define something called the state. Uh, called messages. Now we'll just say const state. This is not gonna make a hundred percent sense right now. Equals use state. Now it returns state for a function. Now what state is in React? State is just an object for a function, so it's like a property. Okay, so if we were using class components in React, we'd use something like state. Now we don't need to do this. We can't really specify. Like we we tried to specify a variable for messages, but this is not saved and it's not used in data binding. It's just a constant really. And the changes are not accounted for behind the scenes. So we use something called use state. And if we updated our state in a, te in a class component, it would do it automatically. But you, we're using React hooks. So what we do, state equals use state. And then we, this is like creating a variable really. And then we input our value right here. Now, state is actually an array. So this is the default value it's initialized to. Now, it's actually a, an array because it returns a getter and a setter. So the, set, the getter is what's returned first, messages. And then we have set messages. So, messages is the array and it's set to this automatically. So it's the same functionality really. Set messages is how we actually change the value of messages. Let me demonstrate. So let's try this set timeout thing again with for two seconds. And inside here, we're gonna set messages, uh, new messages. Okay, so we're just gonna modify the value of messages like this. Messages dot slice. Let's just remove the last message. Or the first message, sorry. We're gonna remove the high message and it'll say hi again. There we go. So after two seconds, or two times one thousand milliseconds. So after two seconds. React detects, because we call this, basically what this function is doing is changing the state for this function, and then it re-renders, it recalls this with the new value of the variable, which is the messages with just one message, basically. <laughs> now, uh, funnily enough, I think it removed both messages. So... If we only want to do this once, what we do is we use another hook called use effect. Now, this is quite an advanced hook. Basically, this is like the constructor, the ng on in it, if you're familiar with Angular. It's a lifecycle hook, which means it's called on start, uh, on create, on update on delete. So this is called, this function here is called when when anything updates, any state updates within the variable, within the function, sorry. On create is when we initially render this component and delete is when we remove this component. Now, we only need to do this once. So if we want to do this once, we type an array here. So let's put this within here, like that. So this is called once. Now, what is this array here? Well, this is what is watched. 
So you put a variable in here. You put a variable, i.e. messages. Now when messages is updated, this is called. So this is on create, this one here. Now if you want an on if you want another variant like on update then we have messages here so this is called when the this is called first when the function is loaded and this is called when messages is updated and first when the function is loaded there we go so whenever the messages variable changes in any way Okay, so that is only called once, that is brilliant. Now you know about lifecycle hooks in React. Maybe I went into way too much depth there. But that is why we need to use state. Now, we're not actually going to use uh, state in, we're not going to use state much in, in React in this project because we there's a thing called Redux that allows us to store a global state across the entire application which we'll get onto later but for now we're just going to use it like this okay remove that part okay so now you know how to store variables inside functions that actually update the function when they are changed brilliant